John Fritz was my fourth great-grandfather, and this is a little bit about his Revolutionary War experience. A brief history of what is referred to as the Race to the Dan. The British General Cornwallis, in the early part of 1781, is trying to catch the armies of General Greene and Morgan across North Carolina. Morgan departs the Cowpens area January 1781 and crosses the Catawba River around February 1st. Green meets up near Beatty's Ford on the Catawba about January 30th. Cornwallis crosses the river February 1st. Both armies travel to Salisbury. The American armies cross the Yadkin River at the Trading Ford, while Cornwallis has to cross farther north at the Shallow Ford because of rising waters. The Americans march through Guilford Courthouse around February 7th and exit North Carolina to Virginia at the Dan River. Cornwallis follows, but is unable to catch the Americans. On February 19, 1781, portions of Greene's Southern Army crossed the Dan, carrying the war back into North Carolina. On March 15, Greene placed his army along three lines of battle at Guilford Courthouse. The first line consisted of North Carolina militia. Along the south side of the Great Salisbury Road, he ordered the Rowan County militia to be placed near a rail fence. He instructed them, along with other militia units, to fire two volleys, if possible, into the British and then to retire to the rear. Since the British had bayonets, it was difficult for the militia to remain for a lengthy engagement, and so they were forced to retreat. Soon, the British advanced through all the lines and the Americans left the field. The army retreated to Speedwell Ironwork along Troublesome Creek. The battle was technically a victory for the British since they occupied the field. However, they suffered severe casualties and the trek across North Carolina heavily burdened their army. According to his pension application 1834, John Fritz stated that he was born in Shenandoah County, Virginia in 1762. It also states, quote, that from Shenandoah County, his father moved when this applicant was very small into Rowan County, North Carolina, where he was living when he entered the service of the United States as a volunteer in a company of rangers under Captain John Lopp about the 1st of February in the year 1781. That the company rendezvoused at the county town and from thence ranged through Rowan County in quest of Tories and spying after the movements of the British, who were at that time passing through Rowan County, they passed through Salisbury and crossed at the shallow fort of the Yadkin, and thence on to Guilford Courthouse, where a battle was fought. This applicant further states that the company to which he belonged also ranged through other counties that during this term of service they were unable to take many Tories as prisoners some of whom they hung and others they, an indecipherable word, for some time and then turned them loose, and that he received no written discharge from this term of service but was dismissed, end of quote. This service would have been for a period of about three months. Quote, this applicant further states that he again entered the service as a volunteer under Captain Peter Faust for the purpose of guarding some British and Tory prisoners, which had been taken in South Carolina and brought to Salisbury for safekeeping, that after guarding the British and Tories for some time at Salisbury, the British prisoners were taken towards Guilford. But this applicant remained as a guard over the Tories, and after they were relieved from this duty, the company to which this applicant belonged ranged Rowan and the adjoining counties to keep in awe the Tories, who were continually annoying the Whigs. That this tour of service was in the summer of 1782, as well as he now remembers, end quote. Six weeks or two months guarding the prisoners and the remainder of the three months ranging adjoining counties. George Fritz, born 1753, older brother of John, was also in the conflict. His pension stated, quote, that he served for three months as a drafted soldier in Captain Lopp's company, early in the spring of 1781, end quote. His service was also at other various times with other commanders. Captain Lopp seems to be the key in finding out a little more information on the service of these soldiers. 
The above pension records are obtained from National Archive records and also transcribed pension statements taken from the Internet from a site, Southern Campaign, American Revolution Pension Statements. Although John Locke died before he was able to apply for a pension, one can do a word search on the above reference site for John Lopp to see what other soldiers may have served with him. Captain Lopp was very actively engaged in the war for a long time. I searched for the time periods of John and George Render's command, specifically February through April 1781. John Sowers, quote, January 1781 volunteered as private under Captain John Lopp for three months, marched through Salisbury towards Catawba River intending to join the American Army near the South Carolina line, but before we got to Catawba River, we were met by Morgan's Army, retreating before Lord Cornwallis. In joining Morgan, he was marched back to the Yadkin River to the trading ford, where the Army crossed in great haste and with much difficulty before Cornwallis arrived. The American baggage fell into the hands of the British, and some skirmishing took place between the rear guard of the American Army and the British, but during the night after he crossed the Yadkin, the heavy rain falling, the Yadkin rose so high that the British Army could not cross it at this ford, but had to march higher up the river to the shallow ford where they crossed. Here the company to which he belonged was directed by General Morgan to guard the prisoners taken at the Cowpens to Guilford, where he was taken very unwell and sent home on parole, and was not able to return to duty during the remaining part of the three months for which term he enlisted which terminated in April of 1781. Michael Sink, quote, In the month of January 1781, about the middle of the month, as well as he can recollect, he was drafted, under the command of Captain John Lopp, Lieutenant George Fritz Ensign. For a few weeks after he entered the service, the company to which he was attached was engaged in defending the lives and property of the citizens of Rowan against the depredations of the Tories, who at that time were laying waste the country and murdering the citizens. When General Green, retreating before the British Army under Lord Cornwallis, crossed the Yadkin River in Rowan County, the company to which the declarant belonged united with Green's army and marched to Guilford Courthouse. Then they marched to Dan River, crossed it, which in a short time they recrossed and returned to the neighborhood of Guilford Courthouse. Soon after the army arrived, the memorable battle of Guilford Courthouse was fought, in which the claimant was engaged. After the battle, the army retired to Speedwell's Ironworks. Richard Hanks quote, Early part of 1781, when Lord Cornwallis marched through, an indecipherable, through Lincoln County, they still under the command of Colonel Lopp were marched by General Pickens to Guilford County, ten or fifteen days before the Battle of Guilford, and that he was accordingly marched under General Pickens to the said Battle of Guilford, that on the morning of March 15, 1781, they where they were halted, he saw and conversed with Captain John Irby, that he fought in said battle and afterwards pursued the British until the Virginia line, still under General Pickens and Colonel Lopp, and afterwards returned to Guilford County. End quote. Ordered to engage the British at the left wing, Battle of Guilford Courthouse. Quote, had a skirmish with the Tories near Salem, North Carolina, at a place called the Hollows, where Captain Lopp was promoted to the colonelcy and Captain Botenhammer placed in command. Unquote. We are unsure of the date and place of this skirmish. Quote, fought in said Battle of Guilford and afterwards pursued the British and afterwards returned to Guilford County. During the time, we had a small engagement with a party of Tories at the Hollows on the Yadkin and continued under said lop until the last of July of 1781. End quote. The Hollows battle appears to be after the Guilford battle, but unknown date. After the war, John Fritz left for Rockingham County, Virginia, where he married Mary Beaver on January 9, 1791, the family lived in Rowan County, North Carolina, and Rockingham County, Virginia until 1810 when they traveled to Lee County, Virginia, an area just east of the Cumberland Gap. John Fritz applied for his Revolutionary War pension on May 27, 1834, in Hawkins County, Tennessee, a neighboring county. About 1848, John died 
and was buried in Lee County. Perhaps with additional research in the future, more can be gleaned about the Revolutionary War experience of John Fritz. Only time will tell.